Hey gang, back with another video for you today. I've got Dahlia here. We're starting a series, or well, maybe not a series, but two videos back to back on iconic fragrances. Today we're gonna to talk about 10 classic iconic male fragrances. Tomorrow we're gonna to talk about 10 classic iconic feminine fragrances. So if you're curious to learn about these iconic fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. It's Dahlia. Hello. How's it going? Good. We have to do the disclaimers, though. We have to say that these are iconic fragrances, but these are not all the iconic no. fragrances that ever Only were. Only ten. Only ten of the iconic fragrances. There are more. There and are you can more. tell us in the comments what we missed. We also have to tell them that just because these were marketed to men doesn't mean that women can't wear them. And not just at all. because the next video was marketed to women doesn't mean that men or anyone can't pets, wear them. Pets can wear them too. <gasps> you just gave me such a good idea. <laughs> um, any other, right? Were there other disclaimers? I feel like... Pets can wear them. Pets can wear them. <laughs> you um, want to get started? I think we should probably like kick this off immediately. Where are we starting? So uh, we're going to start off with one of my all-time favorite fragrances. This is probably one that means a lot to me. Going to the house of Guy La Roche. This is Dracar Noir. Do you know anything about this one? I'm sure I've smelled this before. Yeah? I'm spray it. fairly certain. Smell um, and spray it? I want, I want the people to see. We have the perfume guy strips. Yes. yes. So when people come in here for consultations, that's the strips I use. As you should. In the other room, for us people internally, we use the cheapies. <laughs> I have smelled this so many times. It's soapy, it's clean, it's a little bit aquatic. Shower fresh. Not aquatic. No? No. It came out in 1982 after disappointing sales of the original Dracar. So they came out with Dracar Noir, created by Pierre Wargnay. It features lavender, oak moss, pine needles, mint, bergamot, coriander, wormwood, juniper, lemon, rosemary, verbena, patchouli. It smells like shower gel, like clean, fresh, soapy shower gel. It's it's one of my all-time favorite fragrances. I started wearing it around 84 and I, I was obsessed with it. I went through four bottles, not this size though, smaller bottles. And it, it has a lot of meaning for me because it totally defines the 80s and fragrance for me. Cause I think it's timeless. I, I know what you mean because that's when you smelled it first, but I have smelled this my entire life. I don't think of it as one decade or another because this is... everybody has worn this. That black bottle is very iconic to me. What else do we have on our iconic list? Anyway, this is the first fragrance. It's Guy La Roche Dracar Noir. We're going to Aramis by Aramis. My favorite. This is your favorite? My favorite. So how do you know about this one? My dad wore this. My dad wore the aftershave and you could smell him across the house. Like you knew. Like When aftershaves really... were like stronger than parfums these days. Well, yes. <laughs> yes. And this is one of the most beautiful patchoulis. Um, and it's our friend Bernard Chant, yeah. who we, you and I both love. We love Bernard Chant. Um, and... Amazing talent. Yes, he's one of my favorite classic perfumers. We've done a video on uh, Aramis um, 900 and Clinique Ar Aromatics Elixir. Mm -hmm. both and of both of them were Bernard Chant. And uh, he's created a lot of uh, fragrances for um, Halston. And the original Halston for Women was created by him. But in that mini series on Netflix, they changed the sex to a woman perfumer at IFF. So I don't know why they did that. Mm. But maybe he was not a very interesting person. So they made this woman to be a little more exciting. I'm but before we go on with this, my dad wore this one as well. And he wore a ton of Aramis fragrances. So. Yeah, so I love this. And it's, I mean, but it's like leather with that patchouli. It's a dadly fragrance. I don't, I mean, it's a... Well, it's not really a dadly fragrance, but it reminds me of my dad. That's our association with it, but I mean, if, what's his name with the mustache and the hairy chest? Tom Selleck? Or the other one? Tom Selleck. Probably Tom Selleck. But it's that kind of like, this is a hairy chested. Oh, Burt Reynolds? That's the other one. <laughs> This is so good, though. It's so good. So Even good. with the reformulations, it's so good. Yeah. And you have a bottle, right? I have several. Several? Mm. You wear this? I do. I, I mean, yes, marketed to men, but... Um, what do you like about it? Patchouli. Come on. Patchouli. Like, really. Okay. It's... But, I mean, Dracar Noir, iconic. But Aramis... Seven well, days a week and twice on Sunday. Yeah, Gorgeous. I wore the Dracar Noir and it just has a lot of meaning for me. Mm -hmm. I remember going to junior high. I remember going to high school wearing Dracar Noir. This like, 
this one though. That's good. It's so good. One thing I should let you guys know, Aramis is under Estee Lauder, and Estee Lauder, this came out in 1966. Mm -hmm. Estee Lauder launched a male fragrance called Lauder for Men that smells very close to this. I, Have you I, smelled it? I mean, if I was going to copy a fragrance. Well, it, it, she wouldn't really copy it because she's I was part be, of the same family. If I was going to be inspired by a fragrance. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, maybe maybe uh, uh, the Estee Lauder for men is created by Bernard Chant as well. That guy. They never they never put a name down for the perfumer, so I don't really know. Yeah. It could just be a copy. Could be. Could be. Okay, we've got a really bad, 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 bad boy here. This is why it sells Kuros, very iconic bottle. Mm -hmm. Really, really, I love this bottle. I remember me being like 11 or 12 years old, going to the. I think it was Emporium Capwells and looking at perfumes there, men's fragrances, seeing this bottle. Next to this bottle too. These two really... Spoilers! Anyway, let's talk about Kuros. It's a 1981 fragrance created by Pierre Bourdon. Mm. Do you know Pierre Bourdon? Not personally. If you, did you read The Ghost Perfumer? I was supposed to, wasn't I? Yeah, I gave you a bottle. I mean, I gave you a book. <laughs> <laughs> Probably did. Um, anyway, he gorgeous. created this. This is gorgeous. This is, okay, so if we're talking like, if Aramis is Tom Selleck shirtless reclining, this is Sean Connery shirtless. Hmm. He's more elegant though. Not shirtless. No. Only in a tux he is. But this is more of a bad boy. I think Sean Connery's a bad boy. James really? Bond, for crying out loud. There were other bad boys in the 80s. Well, yes, but this is hardly Mickey Rourke. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Rourke, I think, would be more, more in line for this. Maybe. Maybe. Um, they say that the vintage bottles have silver they shoulders. Do. I do have that. I, I do recall that. Mm -hmm. Do you have this, too? I do. Yeah. I, I do. I have. It's a, it's a lovely, very... Um, I would say butch incense. Yeah, this one also reminds us of uh, Italie Verde Orange Rien Intense Incense. Mm -hmm. um, because I think this has uh, aldehydes. aldehydes and that does as well. And this has civet and that this has incense, it has uh, leather. So it kind of reminds us. It's supposed to be a fougere slash leather. Lots of uh, animalic notes and a lot of people say it smells like, what's that stuff you put on over the toilet? The little... It does not smell like urinal cake. That's what they say. But they don't, they're wrong. Don't listen to the people. <laughs> anyway, Kuros nice. is so iconic to me. Iconic. Very iconic. And then this next one, I used to see these two bottles side by side, both launched in the same year, both very animalic, Chanel Antaeus. Mm -hmm. I don't think The I bottle, these two bottles are the sexiest bottles from the 80s. And then maybe the Dracar Noir as well, which came out a year after these two. We're, we're sticking with 80s fragrances here. Well, the Aramis is from the 60s. Yeah, that's true. These have gone through reformulations. For me, Chanel Antaeus has gone through really bad reformulation. It's light. It's... it's it smells not as good as it used to. I, I mean, they've had to reformulate in some cases because ingredients are no longer... Castorium, mm. supposedly. Is that where the difference is? I mean, it's... I don't know. They don't use fine. Castorium it's anymore. It's nice. It's okay. It's the little beaver. Oh. The beaver animal. Mm. Anyway, this is considered a Woody Sheepra. It's Jacques Polge created. Uh, it was a very bad boy. It was a leather fragrance, a, a, a Sheepra leather fragrance. This is a little more crotch rocket than Harley. It's not that bad of a bad boy. No? In, in this current formulation. I don't know, of, I haven't smelled the vintage Antaeus or I didn't notice it if I did. Well, they use castorium to create the leather and that's what this is. It's castorium here, but I don't think they're using real castorium anymore. Otherwise, there's a lot of dead beavers out there. It's nice. It's good. Iconic. And the name is certainly iconic. The bottle, the presentation. Totally. Totally. Uh, aren't both uh, Chanel Antaeus and Kuros by YSL Greek themed names? Antaeus certainly has the look with the A and the E. Kuros, yeah. Okay. Makes sense. I feel like Kuros, is, a, is that an island? Could be. I don't, I don't know. really know. Somebody tell us. Somebody, yeah, tell us. Somebody who knows. Tell us, tell us, please. Tell us. Tell us all the things. <laughs> what else? What else is iconic? Okay. Going back to the 50s, late 50s, going to the house of Guerlain, it's Vetiver. Super what do you know about Vetiver? Um, iconic. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it's tough to choose a Guerlain. There are so many iconic Guerlains. It's, it's gotten so fresh, guys. These have gotten watered down to the max. This is the latest bottle. I, it's very... It's Vetiver. Delicate. 
Um, but the neroli kind of comes through, the mandarin, there's like a real citrus kind there's of There's a juicy citrus on, on there, but also the floral aspect of it. Very nice. It's pleasant. It's a summertime fragrance, fresh. I think. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Not a, a winter time. No, nope, Not fresh. during the cold time we're having here. Yes. <laughs> Stormy. But yeah, this is iconic. My dad wore it. I started wearing this for the first time in the late 90s. Nice. Yeah. And it wasn't this fresh. It was in a different bottle. It was in a kind of a frosted rimmed kind of rims around it. It was different. Cool. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Cool. I, I wore that one. Takes me back. And then this one. It's another Dadly fragrance. I this have is, an original. You have an original? But like in a mini. Oh, in a mini. Um, remember, I got some in the hall, remember? I do. Oh, are we smelling that one or is this a. No, this current, is the current, current formulation. formulation. This is uh, Florence Polo. This is 70s, Polo. though. This is 70s, late 70s leather Shebra. I do like this one. This is from 1978 and created by Carlos Bonayam. I've it's done a video changed. on his perfumes. Go change, uh, go check it out. No, change it. No, sorry, it's changed. It's changed. It's changed. No, but you know what? With this version, when you first spray it, it smells really fantastic. The pine is really in your face. It smells authentic. The leather is what they've had to replace, and I don't think the leather smells as good as it used to. It's not as boozy as it was. It's sweeter. It's um. I don't know. When I smell the leather in Polo, and then I smell the leather in Anteus. To me, it smells broken. It's not like a formed leather. It's almost like dusty leather. It's gonna, like as soon as you touch it, it falls apart. Yeah, but it is iconic though. It, it's Polo is an iconic scent. It's been around for many years. Decades. It smells good though. It smells good. Yeah. But it's not the same. It's not the same. The cypress is strong. Yeah, I think so. Kind of very clean and fresh and soapy. Yeah. No, I love Polo Green. It's it, it, my dad wore it too. He had the splash bottle. Mm. Remember splash bottles? I still have several. <laughs> you do, huh? I do. From the Ebes? Um, You know me in the Ebes. <laughs> Ebes obsession? Uh, well, we, we go way back. We have a relationship. Okay. We understand each other. Okay. So fast forward to the 90s. We've got Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mans. This is, this is iconic. Very iconic. This is probably what put Francis Kirkjian on the map. Oh, did he do this? His one of his first creations. Wow. It still smells pretty good. It's an amber floral. Amber fougere, I should say. Not floral. It's 1995 Francis Kirkjian vanilla lavender tonka beans, mint cinnamon. It smells good. I it reminds me of the 90s. I remember we wearing this and also smelling so many people or men wearing it. And I think women wear this stuff too because it's bottle, vanillic. Well, the bottle is iconic. All on its own. You think? Uh, I know. Yeah. That's the woods that really come through, though, with the vanilla. Really? Mint the woods. I think Francis Kirkjian knows citruses and citrus flowers. That's why he has a lot of citruses in his collection now. And he did a great job with this one. From what I hear, also, Jean-Paul Gaultier, the Gaultier II fragrance is uh, out but only selling exclusively online. I wish I could get my hands on a bottle. That's also a Francis Crookjian created fragrance, but this is very, very iconic. Iconic. Okay, and then going back to the 60s, once again, we've got Eau Sauvage. Iconic. We were, we were gonna put Fahrenheit, but we went with this classic because we've got a lot of 80s fragrances here. I was heckling him about Fahrenheit. But it's, Eau Sauvage really is the iconic one, I have to say. Well, it's so iconic that uh, Dior steals the name and calls another fragrance with a part of Eau Sauvage. So it's, oh, that's the Johnny Depp one. Yeah. Oh. But this stuff is good. It's reformulated, but it smells really fresh, very refreshing. 1966 is when I it came out. I love a candied citrus. You do? Mm-hmm. You know who created this? I do not tell Edmond him. Rudnitska. Rudnitska. I don't know him. He's a very famous... Dior perfumer. I love it. He did a great job with this one. That's the Petit Grand. It's very like... Green. Mm. Tart. But lemon heads. Lemon heads, yeah. yeah. Really mouth-wateringly good. Yeah, just imagine you're taking the lemon heads and rolling them around in grass and putting it in your mouth. Don't imagine that. <laughs> Strike that. There's definitely some aromatics in there. That <laughs> honestly might be like of the ones, if you said pick one other than Aramis, you would pick that? I would. Okay. Except Aramis, of course, wins. Always. 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 It has a special place in your heart. So good. All right, up next, going to another 70s classic for men, it's Jeffrey Bean's Grey Flannel. You can get this one for about 20 bucks. This one came out in 1975. Iconic. You want to spray it? I don't know. Let's have you I, spray I it. I mean, 
based on what I know of the ingredients, I'm gonna love this. This is a fragrance created by Andre, Andre Fromentin, who I don't know anything about. It's aromatic, green, and woody. It's got oak moss, galbanum, violet, vetiver, iris, neroli, petagran, cedar, tonka, geranium, mimosa. Very green, almost bitter. I love that bitterness. Mm. Do you do you tend to like bitter fragrances? I like a bitterness in fragrance. I like when there's a bitter kind of balancing things, and this has galbanum, which I love, geranium, which I love, violet, which you I love. love. This, I mean, this I think this violet is violet leaves, though. It's, I think so too, yeah. and incredibly, it does smell like gray flannel, which mm. I didn't know that. I thought of flannel as having a smell, but it does. It's a little bit like you went on an outdoorsy kind of a walk with like a thick flannel. flannel? Well, not specifically, but a flannel of some kind. A Pacific Northwest flannel. <laughs> Nice. This is this is very meaningful for me. This is another fragrance that my dad wore, and I was obsessed with that gray pouch it came in, that kind of little flannel cloth uh, pouch. The latest versions do not come with that, unfortunately, sadly. Mm. Moving on to another 70s fragrance, also from the same year, going back to the house, well, not back, going to the house of Givenchy. It's Gentleman, the original from 1975. This, this is one you need to have in your collection. I think you would like this one. I'm excited. This is patchouli bomb. Ooh. Gimme, gimme, gimme. This is so good. This is really, really good. I don't know. Wow. Woody fragrance. Yeah, it's a very woody patchouli with, um... There's, there's definitely leather here, also ambery touches. There's some spices, warm it's spices. It's so dry. It's very dry. This is a fragrance created by Paul Legere. Would you wear this? No. You wouldn't wear it? Do you like the way it smells? Yes. Um, Can I wear it? Yes. Although I think you're wearing um, our bonus fragrance from this list. Oh my god, I just sprayed my sleeve. You did. I saw you do it. Oh god, it smells good. It, it's uh, the vetiver and the leather and the patchouli are very, like I said, dry. Dry. But the spices kind of give it a different kind of dryness. This also has a little bit of a, the urinal cakiness there too, don't you think? More so than Koros to me. What? You did it. It's got some funk. It does. It's got funk. It does. The leather on you is and the, on the more animalic side. We like the funky funk, don't we? One of us does. <laughs> she don't like the funky funk. I uh, don't like the funk. <laughs> Anyway, those are the 10 iconic men's fragrances. What are your thoughts on these fragrances? Do let us know. And let us know of other iconic classic male fragrances. And stay tuned for the feminine version of this video tomorrow, where we go through uh, 10 feminine fragrances with a bonus. And we've got a bonus here as well. But other than that, thank you. Thanks. You can find me on Instagram. I'm the Perfumed Dahlia on Instagram. Yeah, follow her on Instagram. And follow him, the Perfumed Yeah, follow guy. me too. But I'm sure you guys are following me. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. So we do have one bonus option. I think this has become iconic. It's not that old. It's from 1970. This was from 2014. This is Dior Homme Parfum. This is a modern classic. This is, I see this posted all the time. It's so good. It's so sexy. It's my favorite fragrance. It mm. is now my favorite fragrance. It's lovely. This is all about iris. It's lipsticky. It's powdery. Didn't you like leather. stock up on this and have backups for your backups because you love it so much? I have backups for all my backups. Mm. <laughs> no, this is created by Francois de Maché of Dior. He's no longer there. It's replaced by Francis Kirchen now. But this was probably the best version of the Dior Homme DNA. It got more leatherier, more lipsticky, more makeup-y, and uh, a bit rosy as well. It's super fantastic. It's beautiful. Would you wear this? I would wear that. You would wear this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Dahlia would wear this, guys. Ladies. Anyway, that's the bonus fragrance for you guys. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video. Bye-bye.